TRID Integrated Disclosure Rule, also the No Before You Owe Rule. It is coming to the real estate industry in early October, and that's already been extended. But in this video, I want to share with you what you need to know as a real estate investor, how that's going to affect you. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiofsky with FreedomMentor.com. I'm a full-time real estate investor, and in fact, I'm at a closing table right now. I just flipped a property, sold it, made a little over 24000 Final utility bill hadn't come out yet. Um, it's around 24000 I just bought a house too, so I actually have two closings back to back. And that one should either uh, make in the 20000 ish range, maybe a little bit more, or I may just hold on to it and rent it. So I'm a full-time real estate investor. I'm a real estate mentor and coach to many of the most successful real estate investors all across North America. Um, you can find out more about what we do at freedommentor.com or grab my best-selling book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. And also, this YouTube channel has become the number one YouTube channel in real estate investing. So thank you for watching. So in this video, we're going to go over legislation for the United States. So if you're outside the United States, this doesn't affect you. As it relates to closings, and I need to be very specific here, it's when there's an institutional lender lending money on the transaction. Okay, so this does not affect if you're buying a property all cash or if you're buying a property with a local hard money lender or if you're flipping a property and the new buyer's paying all cash or if you're doing a subject to creative closing where you're taking over someone's loan subject to or if you're doing a creative owner financing. So all those, we'll shove those aside. This is just when we have an institutional lender involved, okay? So you have typically that happening when you are reselling a property you have fixed up that is a retail buyer. That's what I call them. Someone who's gonna buy uh, the home to move in and live there. Okay, and so that's what happened on this particular closing here. So the first thing I want to point out about this TRID, T-R-I-D, that's the acronym that the people uh, inside the industry, mostly closing agents, are calling it. The No Before You Owe is, is kind of the, uh, the street name for it. This is the standard settlement statement, HUD statement. This has been around uh, for many, many, many years. In fact, it is issued by the uh, HUD, and, uh, which is Housing and Urban Development Organization with the government. And what is at the, at the 30,000 foot view level of this legislation going to do is supposedly provide more disclosure for buyers, this no before you owe. So in addition to a HUD, what's also going to happen is that a lender is going to have to issue their version of a HUD. It's going to be six pages long, look very different from that. And it is going to have all these disclosures so that before someone buys the property, they supposedly know what they're getting themselves into. That's the vision. So what's important to point out about this is that it means lenders are going to have to get into the HUD creation business, if you will. They're going to have to start creating these disclosure closing statements, which, by the way, this is a funny little tidbit. Uh, they're using the phrase not closing, but consummation. Not kidding. So a closing is now a consummation based on this legislation. It means that now when there's going to be a closing, that lender, we already know if you've been in the business before, how difficult it can be for that lender to get the final clear to close, to get the quote docs out, to get everything ready for the actual closing. They now have an entirely new set of responsibilities and it involves putting together this disclosure, this, this, uh, this TRID, if you will. That is going to make closings delay, at the very least, if this is a big change. If you have any changes that may have to occur that then has to be changed at the lender level. Lender then has to send out potentially a new disclosure, and then that puts another three-day minimum, sometimes more depending on how that disclosure has been delivered, delay for at least three more days. So you can see that the main thing to take away from this right out of the gates is, and there's so many resources on this you can read about. I'm giving you the 30,000-foot view as a real estate investor. You need to know that come October, when there's a closing that involves an institutional lender, you're going to have delays. And if you want to change the documents, such as the closing statements or any, maybe there's an extra lien pops up at the end, that's going to delay you. So just be prepared for that. That is critically important. Now, outside of that legislation uh, that we've talked about as far as delaying things, because now the lender is getting involved in this uh, 
and this world of closing statements, you also have some other things going on in the background. So uh, there's a couple of different software companies that are jockeying for position to be involved in this. Um, some of these larger title company who have had software systems in place, such as First American or Republic, uh, they're now going to either have to update their existing software or somehow integrate with other ones. Some are going to be stuck in the old way of doing things, and so that's going to make things difficult as well because they're going to have to learn how to integrate. When I say they, I mean these closing companies. As a real estate agent, if you're representing new buyers that are buying properties and they're getting an institutional uh, loan, you've got a big responsibility now because you've got to be able to clarify for them what some of these different things are and make sure that everything gets done early so that there aren't delays. Because this happens, y'all. Real estate gets delayed in the closing, and if it gets delayed too much, sometimes people lose their loan lock. Sometimes they can't even get a loan anymore because some of their bill popped up. So it means that if you are going to be selling to retail buyers and you're an investor, number one, be patient things could change and the closing could get delayed. Number two, if you're representing buyers in, in, the, in the space of retail uh, buyers, you better know your stuff about this. Um, not only is this business of real estate, but the changes that are occurring with this legislation. This video is not gonna tell you every single last detail of what's happening here. I'm trying to give you just an overall view, but go read up on this. Go read up on TRID. Go read up on Know Before You Owe. And um, specifically the CFPB, that's a uh, I think it's Consumer Finance Protection Bureau uh, board, something like that. That is the actual um, part of the government that is issuing this. So you can look up on their website and learn everything you need to know about it. You can talk to your, your real estate professionals in your area, whether title companies, real estate agents. I'm just telling you, get ready for delays. And, um, and that is very, very important in this business to be patient when there are delays. And better yet, learn this business so well that you can head things off before they become delays. So you can always nip every little detail in the bud. What if you get to a day before closing and, oh, you forgot to do the, um, the pest inspection? Well, you better just pay that out of your pocket before you have to go sticking that on the HUD. You see what I'm saying? That'll, that'll delay you three days. So make sure you put things in order and be organized prior to these closings, especially when you've got a retail buyer involved. I'm, as an investor, loving selling to retail buyers because I make more money. Okay, so if I flip to another investor, that, that works very well when you have a house that needs a ton of work. But if a house just needs some cosmetic work, as you've seen from other videos, I like to, to sell to a retail buyer. And that's how I'm making $24,451.37. That's how it gets done. You don't make that kind of money when you typically flip to other investors because they take the lion's share of the profit. So if you're going to be in that business, be prepared for delays. Uh, and then also learn what's going on here. Uh, talk to your title company. Get a feel for what their role is going to be, how easy they're going to be able to integrate with their software to be able to get this, this, this thing uh, moving. And uh, there's going to be changes too, so I'll throw that out as well. Expect there to be more delays, more changes, and actually rolling this thing out. It already has been delayed once. I'm Phil Pustiofsky with FreedomMentor.com. Learn more about me at, um, at my website or grab my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Watch some more of these videos. And good luck in getting uh, clear on what exactly this new legislation is going to do and how it's going to impact your business. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.